So today we're going to be looking at the glochidial stage of Hamiota australis. It's a federally threatened mussel that has a panhandle distribution in the Escambia Yellow and Choctahatchee. This was from the Yellow River. A really interesting thing about freshwater mussels is that they're obligate parasites. A lot of people don't know that they're actually better bass anglers than most of the anglers in Florida. The male releases sperm into the water column, which ultimately ends up fertilizing eggs in a female mussel's gills. She broods her larvae there, and those are referred to as glochidia. And then she has to figure out how she's going to get those larvae onto the gills of a fish. They can extrude these lures that look exactly like a fish or a crayfish even, and they'll have all of the larvae in that packaged, uh, it's called a conglutinant, and a fish will come along, a big bass or something like that, and grab onto the lure, and then all of the glochidia and larvae inside of it are released, and they look just like little Pac-Men. So they'll snap onto the gills of the fish, and they'll stay there for about two or three weeks, tapping into the circulatory system and getting nutrients and also a dispersal mechanism from the fish. We track the time of year that each mussel species is brooding larvae, not only to study their reproduction, but also to track any shifts in their reproductive cycle as a result of climate change. As temperatures increase, the timing of muscle reproduction can shift to be either earlier or later in the year, and it may not coincide with when their host fish is present in the river uh, spawning or foraging. These inflated gills here are brooding larvae. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna puncture one gill tube and then flush out those glochidia into some uh, DI water by dropping just the tiniest little bit of salt water onto the glochidia. This mimics the urea that is coming off of fish gills when they are respirating and provides a fake stimuli. They'll snap open and close trying to get a hold of the fish's gill. And if they do, they can use the fish as an upstream dispersal mechanism, which is very important in a unidirectional system, such as a river. They also get nutrients and get carried away to different habitats. 